So, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, Brexit, you would expect that there would have been a huge fallout. There was a lot of doom and gloom prior to the, to the, you know, to the original decision to leave. But over the last three years, actually, we haven't fallen into a recession. And if you were to never know Brexit happened, if you look at the unemployment figures, which are at record lows, and wage growth figures, which are pretty good and well above inflation, you wouldn't know that there was anything really happening in the world. And while the UK economy has undoubtedly slowed down, there's part of a general slowdown globally. So it's not necessarily as a result of Brexit. In fact, I would argue that while we are so focused and obsessed with Brexit in the short run, actually from a return from an investment point of view, it's best to just ignore it because it tends to be, like other geopolitical issues, a red herring. Well, if Brexit is a geopolitical red herring, then why are we seeing vast amounts of money leaving the City of London or reportedly leaving the City of London? And what impact is that going to have on the UK's economy? Look, I think that, like I said, in any short run, people get nervous. They get, uh, they get, you know, they get jerked around because of various, um, you know, expectations of what might happen. But in the long run, the dynamics of the city of London are such that there are very few comparable um, places for finance to be transacted in the scale and, and shape it does. You know, for example, you can't just pick up 10,000 jobs and put them in Frankfurt and all else be equal. There's an entire ecosystem that surrounds the city of London that makes it a very attractive haven for capital because it's legal system, it's educational system, etc. Those things are not going to be changed in any short run because of Brexit. Well, there's a general election in the UK next week. So historically speaking, which political party's uh, economic policy would you say has been the best for the UK? It's a great question and obviously in the short run we're all uh, so focused and obsessed with what's going to happen in the election because we live in society and these things matter and, and, and you know it's a very emotive subject depending on your ideological background but if you go back to the arc of history and you say that actually over the last 120 years Labour has been in power for give or take 40 years, the Tories have been in power for give or take 70 years and look at the pure statistics it doesn't really seem to matter given the fact that you've got a long enough time horizon to, to, you know, to see and why. The reason for that is because the UK has incredibly deep institutions. We don't elect dictators. Nobody can come to power and, and, you know, and, and change the fabric of society or, 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 the, or the underlying basis of the economy overnight. And this election is not going to be any different. Looking at Gibraltar's economy as an economist, uh, where would you say our strengths lie and how do you think uh, The Rock has been performing? So, you know, like most advanced economies, Gibraltar's economy is also a heavily service-dominated industry. And not only is it service-dominated, it's high-end services, financial services, for example, are a big driver of the local economy, gaming services, etc. And the trend has been pretty clear. I mean, those are the hardest services to really displace. You know, some of the, the doom and gloom that exists in the UK or the US, for example, is because of low-end manufacturing that's been picked away by, by you know, by, by more competitive countries like China or Vietnam. But these high-end services are, are, are the ones that are probably last to go. So in that sense, I think Gibraltar's economy will continue to be quite resilient.